Welcome to the very, very messy greenhouse. This should be the time of year when it's the most organized and the most put together, but we haven't quite got there yet. And there's sort of a reason for that. We've been very busy these last couple of weeks working on putting in a new greenhouse. So this is actually considered a cold frame. It's not really sealed off. It's not heated. It's not vented in any way. So it actually doesn't really keep things super warm. And that's fine for these cold season crops like I've planted over here, things like onions and cabbages and broccolis and lettuce, things that don't mind getting a little bit cold. But once you start venturing into tomatoes or peppers or eggplants or citrus, well then here in zone 7B that presents a little bit of a problem. When we first built this cold frame, maybe three or four years ago, it was really what we needed. We needed a safe place to start seeds where they could be protected, where the chickens couldn't get to them. We needed a place to store all of our garden stuff. But as we've sort of come to live in this house for longer, we find we use this space in different ways. So you can see behind me and George, now we use it for our fire storage because it's the closest shelter that we have to the house. We had a really cold winter and we go through a lot of firewood. So this kind of became the natural place to store that firewood. Well, the problem with that is it takes up a lot of space, kind of creates a big mess, but we need a spot to be able to do that. The real solution we found is to put in another greenhouse. Now this serves two purposes. One, it's actually gonna function like a greenhouse. It's gonna be sealed and temperature controlled and even heated a little bit in the winter. The second kind of solution that this greenhouse offers is that it's going to be on the complete other side of the property, which is where we decided to put in the permanent market garden last year. This greenhouse is a really long ways away from the market garden, which is unfortunate because that means you're carrying all your tools all the time and all your seedlings. It's not ideal. It's just not an ideal setup. We've made it work and it's been fine. But as we sort of continue to develop the property, we realized we really needed a space up there as well. So we're going to walk up there and I'm going to show you what that new greenhouse is going to look like. And we'll just sort of take uh, inventory of the market garden, how it's looking and kind of what we need to do to it to get it ready for spring. But first, I thought we could sew a little tray of lettuce together. These are fabulous new trays. So you guys know I love Charles Dowding. He completely revolutionized the way that I garden with his no-dig method. Well, he has opinions about things like seed trays, as do I. And I've been ordering my seed trays from Johnny's, but as you can see, this is just after a, maybe a season or two. And they're not cheap. They're actually really expensive. And so this is difficult for me to swallow. And it was for Charles too. That is why he designed these really durable seed trays. I mean, this is like no seed tray. I can't even really bend it. It's super thick. Uh, these are from All About the Garden. I'll post a link down there. They've been on back order for a long time, but I was finally able to get mine. And this is, I mean, look at how I'm holding it. It's just amazing. And it's funny when you're a gardener, things like that start to make a big difference. All of a sudden you find yourself being drawn to a particular type of soil or a particular type of seed tray. It's kind of just funny how those things develop over time. We become a little bit more particular. So I'm just going to, I actually do my seedlings a little bit different than Charles does. He kind of broadcasts in a, in a small little pot like this, which is how I'm actually doing my celery, and then plucks them out and then puts them in his seedling trays. But since I'm not really growing for production at all, I don't need to worry about if there's empty stuff. It's just for us anyway. You guys remember, I'll put a link down below how we organize our seeds, but I keep them in these really great little plastic containers. You can just get them at Hobby Lobby or something. So let's go ahead and plant. what I want. Starting seeds can be one of those things that's really easy to be overwhelmed by, but you don't need to be. I just try and keep them as organized as I can. <laughs> 
poke a little hole in with my fingertip. I'm just gonna drop the seeds in. Now, this method certainly isn't as precise as Charles. Sometimes I get a few extra seeds in. And I've done it his way and it turns out much more beautiful. But today, we're just gonna get them in the ground. It's gonna be the most important thing. Now, lettuce doesn't mind being cold, so it can just be outside. In fact, the only things I have inside right now started are tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, and some flowers that are a little bit cold sensitive that I started from seed. But everything else is just out in the cold frame. The cabbage seedlings, they can handle a light frost. The onions are fine. The broccoli's fine. How are we doing, bud? Did we miss? I think we probably missed a couple, but we'll just throw a few extra in there. I think this is just kind of one of those spots that people get a little bit hung up. You don't need to. It's just seeds. Okay, that should be plenty in there now. These trays are so <laughs> amazing. I'm really happy to have them. Just the fact that you can hold it one-handed is really helpful. All right, I'll water this in a bit later once I finally hook the hose up. But for now, let's go up to the market garden. I wanna show you what it looks like in its second year. So this is as far as we've made it on the new greenhouse. The market garden is directly to the right of me, just about 10 feet. So everything we need is going to be right here, really accessible, which is going to be very helpful. Hear the tractor, <laughs> all the tractor noises. <laughs> this whole area to the left of me is undeveloped kind of scrubby pasture. So I have big plans for that, but that's another video. This is a plant -a greenhouse. It was designed and made in Canada to withstand really difficult winters, which is why it came to live on our farm because we had a really difficult winter. We get really strong winds through this area. We get a lot of snow. And so we needed a greenhouse that wouldn't collapse. When we got that two feet of snow, two and a half feet of snow this last winter, a lot of greenhouses all over the valley collapsed. And I do not want that to happen to this greenhouse. So hopefully with this kind of Gothic style design, the snow will automatically slough off. It'll be heated a little bit, which should help. And ultimately it'll be really nice, really sealed up. So the idea isn't to grow. We don't need like a, a greenhouse to grow our tomatoes or our peppers. We get plenty hot for that. The idea is mostly to have a safe spot to grow seedlings so that we can work on some rotational crops. Um, and then also to have a spot for our citrus trees, which I keep, indoors right now um, and they do okay but they're not super happy the humidity is not great and they don't quite get enough sunlight for their taste so i'd really like to have a place where those trees can be in pots under the sun all the time year round we'll just need to heat it enough that it doesn't go below freezing so big plans for this greenhouse and i'm sure how i think it'll be used will actually evolve as we continue to actually use it um, but on the whole i'm really happy with how it's come together this is a 10 by 26. And in order to get that put in, we had to build up because nothing on our property is flat, a little retaining wall with cinder blocks and gravel so that the greenhouse would be able to sit flat. So a lot of prep work went into this site, a lot of digging, a lot of bolts <laughs> have gone into this so far and we're not done yet. All right, remember this time last year, this whole area was just scrubby pasture. So I'll post the link to the video below where we transformed this space into our gigantic no-dig market garden. We call it that because we grow in these market style rows, not because we sell any of the produce. This is all for our family right here. Um, so the concept really of no-dig, we took from Charles Dowding, which is just layering on cardboard. Here I have found that I need to do it two or three layers thick making sure to cover up any kind of gaps in the cardboard at all. And then we just put bark down on the pathways, edged our beds in rock simply for the look of it. 
and then did about six inches of compost in each bed. So it was a ton of work to get this set up, but not nearly as much work as tilling and weeding. On the whole, I couldn't have been happier with how this system worked. It completely transformed the way that we grow vegetables, the way that we put in garden beds in general. I've used this method for new flower beds, for covering up parts of our lawn that we're developing, and it's worked great. Super happy about that. But you can see that after a really hard winter, it looks a little scrubby. <laughs> it, look, it needs a little TLC. Let me show you what I mean. So here's a perfect example. Now, remember this method was designed in Britain where they get a lot of rainfall. And what happens when you get rainfall is that the cardboard that you use really stays damp all the time. We get really hot and really dry here. And so the cardboard here doesn't break down nearly as quickly as it does somewhere where it gets a lot of rainfall, um, which is fine, not a big deal at all. But what we have found is because the cardboard doesn't stay super soft, that it tends to kind of just slough off some of the bark. And so this is no big deal. Some of this area we've actually had to redo because we became quite the cardboard connoisseurs in doing this. And we found we got really particular about certain sizes of cardboard that we liked. We stopped messing with all the little small boxes and started going to recycling centers to get like the gigantic pieces of cardboard because one of the biggest weeds that we deal with in this garden is called morning glory. And it goes everywhere and it will find any nook and cranny that it can to come out and it will travel for 10 feet to find a crack that it can come out of. So some of this we just had to re-cardboard, which isn't a big deal. We just raked the bark back, put a new piece of cardboard down or two, and then moved the bark back on. So some of these areas in the pathway were just a little bit more difficult than others to manage. On the whole, still not bad at all when it comes to weeding a garden. But to freshen this up this spring, we're just gonna need to spread probably another four inches of thick wood chips. So this is bark that I got um, from a local kind of landscape supply, which is not my favorite, but I found it really difficult to get a hold of um, arborists who would come and drop their wood chips here. But this spring, I was driving down the road, I saw a truck full of wood chips, and I wrote my name and number and said, I want your wood chips, please come drop them at my house and stuck it on his windshield. And he came and he gave us a really beautiful load of wood chips for just a couple bucks. So we have a lot of gorgeous stuff now to spread and it smells delicious. So I'm really excited to freshen this up just cause it'll look nice, it'll look ready for planting, which it almost is. The beds themselves look excellent. And really all that's needed from these sorts of beds, you can see there's hardly any weeds even. I mean, maybe just a few. The compost feels great and it looks great. So all we're gonna do is just add about two inches of fresh compost to each bed before we plant it. So the way that I manage this is I get a dump truckload of compost maybe once or twice a year and I just sort of work from that so that I always have it at the ready. Ideally, this would be something that we would make ourselves but we're not quite set up for that yet. We have a huge compost pile but it's not in a place where I can really turn it and manage it right now. We're working on it, but these things take time. So I'll just bring a wheelbarrow in, dump some compost on here, rake it around, and then the beds will be ready for planting. So really easy to manage that aspect of things. Uh, we have a few things that overwintered. Let's look at those. All right, so these little green shoots poking up are garlic, planted in the fall. They go through their freeze cycle throughout the winter and then are one of the first things to emerge in the spring. What's funny to me is that we actually have two beds full of garlic, different varieties. This is obviously an earlier variety than some of the others who are still a little bit dormant as we go along. One of the things we get asked about is these tubes here. So I've mentioned this plenty of times, it's hot and dry here and we don't get a lot of rain. That means we have to irrigate anything if we want it to grow. Every single thing we plant has to be irrigated. So we have a well that we do that from, which is a great way for us to do it, which is why we're really thankful actually for the snowpack, because that is what allows our well to fill up every single year. So that's what we water these from. These are just a drip tube. They have holes in the bottom. So we turn on the valve, it turns on all the beds at the same time and water just drips out right onto the soil. So it's a really efficient way to water in our climate. Overhead sprinklers tend to evaporate really quickly 
And of course it puts a lot of moisture on the plants. We can eliminate a lot of problems just by watering directly on the ground. So that's what works really well for the vegetable garden. Now that the worst of the winter has passed, even though it's supposed to rain all day, I'm really anxious to get out to the garden. All the irrigation tubes need to be straightened and tacked back down. We need to top dress the walkways with some fresh bark. We need to get the compost on the beds that we're ready to plant carrots and beets in. These are actually some overwintered carrots that were planted late last fall. And they've done pretty well. I actually didn't do anything special to them. Here, Will. But these will continue to grow. <laughs> these will continue to grow as the weather gets warmer and should be ready to pull out probably in a month or two. So lots of good stuff happening in the garden. This is a time of year for a ton of work and you just kind of have to submit to it and dig in and just be thankful that you have a space to cultivate.